All right, we're going to talk about forced time graphs. Um, let's see. Right here, we have a, um, a forced time graph, um, just a generic one looking at our axes. We have force on the Y, and we have time on the X. If we take a graph like this, and we want to calculate area, we will take force, and we will multiply it by the time. That's how we find any areas, just simply to take a, a length times a width of something. If we do that, well, we should already know that force times time is equal to change in momentum. It's also equal to impulse right here. The way we, we show impulse is with capital J, but we also know that impulse is equal to the change in momentum, which is M times delta V. All of this is stuff that has been discussed in our class before. The, the new part of it is the idea that we could use the area to come up with this. So down here is an, exa is an example of this. We have um, a force time graph where we have um, a force on the left and a time on the right. And let's see if I can move this up a little bit um, from here. And let's do this one. Um, well, I might get this figured out eventually. Um, Let's close this one and let's go to this. Now, if we look at this graph right here, um, when we do the force times the time, if it says, you know, like we have a, a one and a half kilogram particle and the particle is initially at rest, um, find the particle's speed at a time of five seconds. Well, okay, first of all, if we do that for this, the first thing that we're going to have to do if we're going to work on A is we're going to have to recognize that momentum is mass times velocity. Well, I have this thing's mass. It's 1.5 kilograms. It says so right here. Sorry that my green squiggle's still in there. And, um, and it says that it is at rest. Well, at rest means that it's got a velocity of, um, of, of what? It's going to have a velocity of zero. Um, so, when it initially starts out, it would have a momentum of zero kilograms meters per second. But now if we do this at a time of five seconds right here, if we come on over to this place, um, when we come on over here, what we can do is we can actually look at um, our areas on here. At five seconds, we've covered the area of the triangle and we've covered the area of the square. So, as we start to look at this some more, for the triangle, let's see, for the triangle here, remember that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So, for this triangle, we've got one half. The base would be three, because it goes from this point to this point. So, that would be times three. And then the height of this, we're looking at um, half of the triangle at least for starters, to get our maximum height, which is going to be approximately 6 newtons over here. So we're going to, well, not approximately, but like if I drew my line better, it'd be um, halfway. We'd have 6. So if we do this, we will get um, 9 newton seconds or 9 um, kilograms meter per second, whichever unit you choose to use is fine, but pick one. Um, now you could do it in two smaller triangles. I could do half of the triangle and half of this one and then double it. I just chose to go the rest of the way. And we also have the area of our square. And the square is just simply base times height or length times width, however you want to say it. Um, this has two by two, um, as you can see. Actually, just kidding. It goes two this way, and then it goes four. I didn't look for a second to see that they're in the same increments. So it goes two times four, which is eight newton seconds. Now, coming off the graph, it's easy to come up with newton seconds because it's two seconds and four newtons. Um, but that four is also negative. Um, come down here and put it in a different color just so you can make sure that you see that the 4 is negative. And if the 4 is negative, that's going to make the 8 negative. How I know it's negative is because, well, look, it's coming down into um, the negative y area. So it's coming down into this fourth quadrant. So I've got eight, negative 8 newton seconds and positive 9 newton seconds. If we take these two and we add them together, we end up with a grand total of 1 newton second. 
that's going to be the the momentum of my, um, what is it, a vehicle, whatever it is, a particle at five seconds. So if it's initially at rest, it starts out at zero. So it goes from a momentum of zero to having a momentum of one Newton second. So what I need to do to find it at five seconds is I actually need to basically do this over again. I need to do P is equal to MV. My momentum at this point is going to be one Newton second. It has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. What's the velocity now? Well, once you divide one by one and a half, you end up with an answer of 0.7 meters per second. So here is my answer to part A, okay? And where it says B, calculate the momentum by using the area under the curve, well, that would be this right here. The answer to that is one Newton second. All right. Um, let me do another example of this. Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm figuring this out. I thought I had, oh, that's over here. Close. There we go. All right. I have one more example. It's right here. Make sure we've got it up here high enough that I can write on it. All right. I have another graph here, and I'm sure my lines on this are going to be incredible. Um, I should like use a ruler or something. Um, but if I have this right here, this can be turned into two triangles and a rectangle. So if I am able to approximately, oh, I did better than I thought I would, draw a line down here. Oh, go me. Um, to make two triangles and a rectangle, we need to figure out the area of part one, part two, and part two three. Okay, so for the two triangles, um, it says, you know, use it to calculate the impulse. Well, impulse is the same thing as what we did before. It's another way of saying it. It's simply force times time. We just need to add them together. So for our first triangle, we have um, one half base times height. Well, that's one half. The base of this particular one is two seconds. So that's two. The height of this is 100. So that is going to end up being 100 Newton seconds. Well, if you look at this triangle, it's going to be exactly the same. It is exactly the same as the first one. It has a, a base of two and a height of 100. So we can actually take this and multiply it by two and come up with a total of 200 newton seconds. Now, the rectangle. When I do that one, it's length times width, or you could look at it as base times height. I did it different this time, sorry. Um, that one has a base of four, and it also has a height of 100. So when I do this, we get 400 newton seconds. Now, what I'm going to do with those in the end is I'm going to simply take my 200 and I'm going to add it to my 400 and we get a grand total of 600 Newton seconds. Now if you do it with sig figs and you want to go back and follow all of this, I, I would technically have a line over that second, um, you know, that second zero right there like from the left um, or from the right, sorry. but. I'm more concerned right now with you being able to do the um, just the calculations like the length times width and the base, the base times height. That's all you have to do in order to get this.